Hey everybody, in keeping with my theme of uh, talking about PPE, I thought I'd mention another thing. Wearing a mask when you're machining cast iron is not a bad idea. Uh, those of you that have machined cast iron, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and if you, if you haven't tried it yet, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about as well. Let me take my earplugs out so I can hear what I sound like. Hey Griff, great talking to you today. Um, looking forward to, to catching up with you as soon as we possibly can. Um, if you're watching this. But welcome to part six of the Universal Pillar Tool update where we left off yesterday I had loctited the table to the stem. I'll show that in a minute uh, or towards the end of the video. But I, I decided to just let that thing cure. There is no rush for me. And I'm um, and, uh, and counting on the Loctite to hold the, the Pillar Tool table onto that stem um, for the machining, for taking off that uh, final 25 thousandths on the rim and perhaps, if I feel comfortable with an interrupted cut, perhaps skim, skimming the top of it. Um, that's not necessary. But anyways, I decided to go ahead and let that be. I wanted to work on the, uh, the stem or the base for the pillar tool. So let me um, switch around here. Let's, I know this is a little bit weird. I'm, trying, I'm holding the little stand. Um, but anyway, here is the base. If you can see it, I'll publish some still photos on my Instagram page because they kind of show this a little bit better. But what I did, I, I thought about different ways of holding the work in the uh, in, in the various things. I played with the four jaw, I played with three jaw. What I came up with was the Martin models. One of the neat things about their castings is it has a little stem on the base. And I figured there, there must be there for a reason. So long story short, I found the center of the base and I drilled a small uh, hole with a, a countersink. I did that over in the mill. And then I've just finished. It took a long time, but I turned the stem down to a consistent diameter. It's three quarters of an inch. And I turned the periphery of the base so it's consistent as well. And then I turned the base flat. And the, the reason I did that is what I'm going to do next, and I'll probably try to show this. Now that this is all done, oh, I also undercut here so that there's an undercut that's less than three quarters of an inch right here. Because if you think about it, when I finally do machine the bore from the top, I'm going to machine that to three quarters of an inch for a nice tight fit on the base of the column. And so that will, the, it'll clear that out, so to speak. I'll probably actually cut this stub off before I machine this, but I'll have to let you know about that. Um, I'm trying. If there's any reason to leave it on, then I may leave it on, but I'll probably probably cut it off. So that's where we have it today. Let me, as I mentioned, I'd like to show you what I have in mind. Um, right now, I'm I'm brushing off any of the old cast iron, not old, but any of the cast iron dust that might be there. There'll still be some there, but I'm getting ready to, to disconnect this um, this setup, as you can see. So the next step, let's see, well, one, a couple things I didn't mention. Under here, there's a little undercut as well underneath the base. Um, the drawings call for it to go to a, an eighth of an inch, but it was difficult getting a tool in there, so I just went to a sixteenth of an inch. There's still a nice wide rim around here that will be the provide the support, and the, I'll be drilling three holes. I'm going to mark those in a minute. So let me do this. Let me set the camera down again. I'm going to hope it catches most of this. At least you'll you'll be able to see kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, you can kind of see the lathe there. So this little extension bar for the, the locking mechanism, I'll take that off. Backing out the tailstock with the live center in it, and then on doing the three jaw. Let's see. Okay, so we've got that out. Here is the the base as it's machined. I'm really pleased with the way this thing looks. It's it's always a little weird when you're starting to machine some a cast iron part. So here you can see is actually the where I marked the center, center punched it for the eventual bore. And I've also I sanded this, this part flat because the next step before I can bore, I'd love to just flip this thing around and bore the hole and be done. 
but what I'm going to do, I'm using a clamp pad, a brass clamp pad in here. So the next thing I need to do is to, and part of the reason I wanted to leave this stub on, I'll put this uh, center of the, the machine in the, or the, uh, the base in the three jaw chuck. And then I'll be able to use a lathe cutter and mark the center line of the base. And that's critical because from that center line, then I can measure the offset, the place to drill for the brass clamping pad. If you're making one of these, you know what I'm talking about. So without any further ado, let's see. I'll go ahead and go wider so we can clamp on the base. I'll pick the camera up in just a minute and show you exactly what I'm doing. But I'm opening the three jaw chuck up now so that the base will sit in. Knocking things around. Okay, here we go. So the base is set in the three jaw. I'm, I'm setting it this way on purpose because now I'll just tighten it a little bit. I'm not not going all the way tight on it. But what I'm talking about is I'm going to put, I'll probably use the diamond tool bit in here because that has a very nice scribing feature to it. It's high speed steel. I'll show you a close up in just a minute. I hope you all still like these uh, longer videos. Somebody sent me an email after I did the one where I did the assembly on the Gingri Shaper and said, hey, you should do longer videos. Said, okay. All right. So, that. I want to get the, the pad, the clamping pad area pretty much vertical. All right. The base is clamped in there. And that's the zero. We go in a little bit. See if that scribes the line in the cast iron. There we go. Pull the flashlight out. Long flashlight. Good. Oh yeah. All right. Pretty good. Let me do, give it a little bit more of a line. I'm going to adjust the angle to make it just a wee bit sharper. The few things I'm not crazy about with the Grizzly 12 by 36 lathe is this top nut. I've been meaning to forever come up with a, a more user friendly um, way to loosen that, but haven't got around to it. So here we go. Tight, doing a couple thou. Oh. <laughs> a couple thou too much. Oh, yeah, the, it gets thicker as you go along, so the critical part is right along in here. Okay, good. So let me bring you in here. If you can see that, what I used was the diamond cutter, diamond shaped tool bit there in the lathe tool holder and I scribe the line, the center line here. This is where when I go to bore the um, the three quarters of an inch bore will be for the base. So I have to offset right here I need to drill and bore and countersink for a quarter inch nut and the um, corresponding brass clamping pad which I've showed those in previous videos. So. That's what I wanted to do, and I'll need to do that, put the brass clamping pad in place before I can proceed with boring the three-quarter inch hole here. So I'm probably, I may try to do that tonight, and then I'll come back and bore the hole later. I'll definitely keep you posted about that. As you can see, I didn't use the the uh, tail, the little three-quarter inch tail, so I may I may just go ahead and cut that off, but no sense cutting it off now until I, I'm going to have to take this thing over to the mill 
measure my offset for this, um, which I'm just going to go with the dimension in the book that they used for the three quarter all the other three quarter inch um, clamp pads, and I'll also need to mark once I have that dimension. Then I'll also need to go in that that exact distance and then and drill a hole down for a one sixteenth inch pin that will go into the clamp pad and keep it from rotating. So I hope that makes sense and um, <laughs> let me know if you have any questions. Oh yeah, I wanted to show a couple of other things. Let me walk around here with you. The uh, base, here it is. I just decided to let it sit and cure overnight. Well, it's already been overnight one night, but it couldn't hurt to let it go a while longer. So it's sitting there. It's probably fine, but I, like I said, I was in no rush and um, might as well let it let it set up before I do the final machining. Something else I did here, and Griff, you might recognize this, um, this little vise. This uh, used to belong to our buddy Bruce Albrecht. So he gave it to me when we were aboard ship one time. I just used it. I had it set up outside, used my angle grinder, and I ground the flash off of the arms here for the universal pillar tool. So got these two ground. There wasn't much on these. The this one there was a ton, but I've got it ground flat. So now I'll be able to set it in the vise, each of these pieces in the vise, and, and I'll I'll mill flat on one side and I'll be able to rotate it over and mill off the other side. So and then I'll have some consistent surfaces that I can measure from and do the actual machining so again apologize about the erratic camera work here's the clamping pads i was talking about they're half inch brass with a one six a quarter inch 20 um, bore and tap in the in the center and then a one sixteenth inch slot milled into them so that the 1 16th inch pin, I'm, I'm going to use drill rod, but I could use these little drill bits. It just, it'll come down through the casting and create like a little finger that'll hold that in place, keep it from rotating. That's the idea. So there we have it. I think that's all the updates for tonight. Thanks again, everybody. I appreciate you watching and uh, I will keep you posted.